Yeah. Hi everyone, welcome to the Webby and O'Neill channel. I'm Ryan Giggs and with me today is Tony O'Neill and we're going to talk all things Man United. Too much to talk about to be honest Ryan, but it's great to have you back. Fantastic to see you again. Thank you. First question Ryan, some fans and people in the media think we haven't had a successful transfer window Ryan. I just want to focus on the four main signings which is Onana, Mount, Hoyland and Amrabat. I want to get your views on the signings, your opinion. Um, no, I think it's been OK. I mean, I think it's too early to judge, first of all. Um, obviously, we've not seen Hoyland yet. Um, he made his debut against Arsenal. I thought he looked impressive in the short time that he was on the pitch. Um, Amrabat obviously hasn't played for us yet. And I think the other two, um, Anana and Mount, are good players. And I think good players make the players around them play better. Um, but it's early days yet. Sure. I think they're all good players, but time will tell. Time will tell. But the problem is, Ryan, people are out there and they're thinking we should have had more. Is there any position you think we should have strengthened? No, I, I think for me, for years, um, the centre-forward position has been a um, big problem for us. You know, to have a proper centre-forward up there who can make, you know, the likes of Bruno, the likes of Marcus... Um, the other players around them and have a real focal point. You know, Marcus has played up there. Obviously, Anthony, Mar Anthony Martial is in and out. Whether he is a proper out-and-out -out centre-forward, I don't think so. So to have a real out-and-out centre-forward up there who can hold it up, who can run the channels, who can make the players around them play better, I think that was the most important thing in the summer. Hoyland, six foot three. Big lad, strength out there against Arsenal. Are you looking just forward to him being up there on his own? Or do you think they'll just have two wingers supplying him? Is that how you see Hoyland will be used? Well, a focal point, first and foremost. And then, of course, Man United with um, the history of wide men, wingers, making things happen, scoring, making goals, and hopefully having him on the end of that. Eric Ten Hag walked into Man United. Massive job when he walks in here. How do you see he's done so far? I really like him. Um, I think he's got, especially last season, most of the big calls right. It's the nature of the beast, you know, managing Manchester United. A couple of poor performances or defeats and everyone's clambering to have we got the right man. But he, he needs time. He needs two or three or even four transfer windows. But I like him. I like the way that um, he speaks. I like the way that um, his team likes to be on the front foot. I think this season, to be honest, it's not been a great start, but it's a long season. And, you know, we've had new players come in and they're going to take time to settle, which sometimes you don't get at United. No, you don't get at United. Now, looking at United's away form under Eric Ten Hag, yeah. it's not very good. No. How is he going to improve that, round? Well, that definitely does need to improve. I think, you know, our home form um, has been brilliant. Um, over the last um, season or so. But yeah, especially against the big guns away from home, our form needs to be better. And listen, I think against Arsenal, it was a decent enough display. And what, we're, we're an inch. Um, if Ganacho's on, um, then we come away with a different feeling, um, a different result. So that definitely needs to improve because at Old Trafford, you know, we're very hard to beat. But our away form, if you're going to do anything, if you're going to win leagues, if you're going to challenge, you know, like some Man City, then you need to go away and win away from home. How, looking at Eric Ten Hag, how do you see that the standards and a winning mentality have improved? Do you see that? Yeah, I think he come into obviously a difficult situation. I think he is a winner. You know, he's he's won at Ajax. Um, he knows what it's like to win leagues. So. Yeah, I think he has done that. But like I say, at United, it's a different beast. Even from Ajax, one bought, put, uh, bad performance, one bad result, and then you're under the spotlight. But, you know, it's not like, you know, Chelsea got beat off Forest last week at home. If that had happened to United, it would be just massive, more, massively more scrutiny. We've got to handle that and we've got to handle the, the poor performances. But no, I think he has changed the mentality. And I think, like I say, I do like him. Well, the standards have clearly changed. But he's under pressure. I mean, the media and certain fans out there are now questioning. We've had two wins, two losses. The pressure's there. Is he able to turn it round? And how is he going to turn that around from, from the team, what's been going out there? The display, the tactics and the effort has been questioned. Yeah, well, I think, first of all, we need to 
have more power and competitiveness in midfield. So he's brought in Amrabat to do that. Yeah. I, th I think that's important. You know, if you're going to go away from home, you need to dominate midfield. You need to have that physicality and that strength. So that has been the sorry to, to interrupt. That has been the main gripe. Yeah. from a lot of areas about that midfield. You've got Casemiro sat in there. He seems to have like been isolated a lot and big gaps to come through. How do you close that gap? How do you see it? We've got signings there. We've got Mount. We've got uh, Amrabat, what's coming. Will they be good enough? And will Ten Tenag be good enough to see what the problem is? Yeah, I think he will. I think he'll recognise what he has recognised by bringing in Amrabat. So hopefully he'll bring that physicality and help Casemiro in that midfield role mounts out um, for a bit now. So I can see, you know, Amrabat, Casemiro and, and Bruno in that midfield. And already that looks more physically strong, more able to dominate games. And able to improve. That's what we want to see in it, Ryan. That's, that's what I want, the hope. And with the players in there, Eric Ten Hag, he believes that the players he's brought in will improve the team. And that's all we can hope for, surely. Yeah, it is. And I think, you know, first of all, we need to get back to clean sheets yes. because we have got the quality up front, you know. And I think, like I say, hopefully he's the last piece of the jigsaw, Ireland, and he brings that that focal point, you know, that, that centre forward that United have had over the years who can be a fan's favourite, can chase down defenders, can press from the front, you know, if it's going to be ugly sometimes, someone who is going to hold it up, someone who is going to run the channels and, you know, hopefully the rest of the team will, will react off that. You mentioned the Arsenal game. Well, after the Arsenal game on Sunday, it looks like we have a situation. Uh, the situation is that Sancho's commitment has been questioned uh, by Eric Ten Hag. How do you look at that situation as it is now? and going forward. And the reason why I ask you that is because you are in a unique position for this football club. You have played for this football club and you have been manager of this football club. So how would you see this being resolved? From the outside, you don't know. It looks like Ten Hag has tried everything with Sancho, really. And I, when he came to the club, I, I was actually a fan. I thought that he, he could get better, he could improve, which he's not really done in the short space of time he's been at the club. He's, for me, he always made the right choices in that final third, which is rare for a young winger, but it just hasn't happened. And, you know, he's sent him away to get fit. Um, he's tried him in different positions. And for me, calling him out um, publicly is probably the last straw or the last sort of um, try to get the best out of Sancho. Um, the player can react and think, right, I'll show him. I'll show the manager what I'm, I'm capable of. Or, you know, he can sulk and um, probably won't get anywhere. So it's up to Sancho now. He's the one who can, um, I know a lot has been made of his, his training. And for me at United, my experience when I was a player, training was harder than the games. So you have to have that performances in training to get yourself on that pitch on a Saturday. So he's got to improve. I, I, I think that's that's the bottom line because, you know, you, you've got a manager who won't settle for every day. Good is not if, good if, enough, if, No, if that is true, the, the training um, performances haven't been good enough, then that's, you know, you're not going to play on a Saturday. Jaden Sancho coming out, in your opinion, was wrong in what he said and how he's done it. He should have gone to the manager. Is that what you're saying in private? No, I, I think um, when the manager calls you out, it is the last sort of... Um, it's the end. Well, I don't know if it's the end, but, you know, he's probably at the end of his tether where he's thought, right, this is the last thing, see if, see if this works. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see afterwards. Question to follow on from that, Ryan, is what would Fergie have done? <laughs> you know, you look back at the history of Man United and we look at Eric Ten Hag setting the standards. He wants, he's changing things with inside Old Trafford and the players' attitude and mentality. But I think it goes deeper than that. I think it's um, a responsibility for the dressing room as well, for his teammates, Sancho, to make sure that he is performing every day in training. You know, we drove each other every day. Yes. And, um, you know, sometimes the manager didn't have to do a lot because the standards were already there in the dressing room and on the training pitch. So the players have got to take responsibility as well. If, you know, if your teammate isn't pulling his weight, if that is true, then they have to call him out. They have to make sure that he does perform because 
listen, he's got ability. We've all seen that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, just doesn't seem to have it here, though, in the Premier League. A lot of people are saying out there he's just not physical enough uh, and just can't seem to cope with the intensity. That's how some people see it. Jaden Sancho believes that he's being made to be a scapegoat for whatever reason that is. But he's got a chance. Everyone has got the chance there to get back in that team once, you, once you've been removed from it. So really, he should just knuckle down, do you think? This, yeah, there's only the one week? person who can change it. And that, yeah. like I said, I keep banging on, but you can only get it back on the training ground and build your confidence, yeah. build your fitness, build your physicality and um, you know do everything you can. Don't give the manager any excuses to call you out. Well, the manager did call him out and people... I've complained about that. So I have to look at it from the other point of view. Was Eric Tenag, did he do it in the right way? Or as you say, do you think he's, that was the last line of, I've had enough of you. Uh, this is how I'm going to deal with you yeah, from now on. Yeah, it seems like it was the last straw. You know, it was not the last straw. but He's tried last, everything. La, yeah, the last throw of the dice. That I've tried everything. Let's call him out publicly and see how he reacts. Well, going on to another question, Ryan, and it's about what goes on here inside and outside uh, Manchester United. The protests uh, have stepped up in recent months uh, against the Glazers. Are you, supportive, are you supportive of the message of these protests about the Glazers? Um, well, I think like anyone, like all the other fans, we just want it resolved. And um, we just want, if there is a takeover, let's get it done. I know we're talking about billions of pound but let's just get it done because, listen, if if the things weren't too bad on the pitch, if everything, if we're winning games, winning trophies, then, you know, you could probably get away with it. But we're not winning trophies, we're not winning games, and it's just an added sort of pressure for the manager, for the players, with lots of outside no outside noise. And, you know, the manager has enough to, cap uh, to, to cope with, with things on the pitch. He doesn't need the added questions at press conferences or the added pressure of constantly you know being asked questions about takeover bids looking at the takeover we've had discussions before and if someone did buy manchester united and they were sold your priority would it be player recruitment or would it be the ground we can see the ground yes we are, i think we're all in agreement about it needs refurbishing but would you knock that ground down and rebuild it somewhere else? Or would you just knock it down and keep it where it is and rebuild? Well, I think it's everything, first of all. We need significant investment in both playing staff, the stadium, the training ground. We need everything. Um, because, you know, this for me, it's the best ground in the world. Yeah. So let's get up to the standards of, you know, other teams, other clubs in the rest of the world. The same with the training ground and the same with the playing staff. So for me, the investment needs to be significant. It needs to make a difference and it needs investment in everything. The ground needs, preferably, I would like it to stay as it is. Um, and but, just. But if it needed knocking down and that was the decision uh, by, by all those looking at it from within, they made that decision in the best interest of Manchester United. Would you go along with that? Yeah, if that's the best thing to do, I, I, I think so. Yeah, you know, from a emotional point of view, from um, a so playing, how many, yeah, yeah playing, yeah, yeah. Um, being a fan. Yeah, you know, you would like to Old Trafford to stay as it is and, yeah. and be improved. But if that isn't possible to bring it up to the standards of the likes of Tottenham, of other stadiums around the world, I know that Real Madrid have obviously done theirs as it stands. Um, who else have done that? I think uh, San Siro have done that. Then that would be my first option to have it as we are and improve it. But if that isn't possible, if we can't get it up to the standards that other clubs um, or other grounds um, we, that we need to get to, because we need to be the best. We yeah. need to be the best ground, best playing staff and the best training ground. Yeah. And well, at the moment, that's not the case. Looking at the takeover... We've got two bidders. People out there believe that they should have been more bidders and would have been sold by now, but it's not happened. But you've got Sheikh Yazim and Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Looking at the two bids, Ryan, what is your preferred bid? Sheikh Yazim or Sir Jim well, Ratcliffe? Well, it's the one who's going to make a difference. The one who's going to put in significant investment for me. Um, and I don't know who that would be. It looks like um, 
from the outside, it looks like um, Sheik um, Yazim, Jesse, yeah, yeah, who's gonna put the most money in, who's gonna own it 100%. Um, but whoever's gonna make the most investment and significant investment and make a difference. Well, look, looking at the investment, what's there? Manchester United, biggest club in the world. You look at it now, I just want to touch back on how, when your playing days there, you was a winger, investment was there, Sir Alex Ferguson had it all, your team was flying. You're a winger, Ryan. We've got one here in Garnacho. How is he going to remove Marcus Rashford? Or do you see him removing Marcus Rashford? Because there's pressure on. The reason why I say it is because when you was a young lad, the pressure was on to remove someone in front of you. How did you do it? And how is Garnacho going to do it? You know, he's done brilliant so far. Um, I think he's been seen as an impact player more. So he started the first few games of the season, um, probably didn't make the, uh, or didn't produce the performances that he was capable of, but that was the whole team really. But for me at the moment, he's still an impact player, but he's still young. Next time he gets his chance to start, he has to give the manager no reasons to, to not play him the next game. And just like Arsenal at the moment, he looks like an impact player at the moment, but a brilliant talent, one that gets you off your feet, uh, one that fans want to see. Um, but now he needs to, when he does start games, he needs to perform from minute one to, to the last minute. Just like every player there. Just Ryan. like every player. Yeah. Just like every player. That's what you have to do. Yeah, you do. Listen, Ryan, it's been an absolute pleasure. Listen, thanks for joining us. Smash the like button, get your comments in, and please subscribe to the channel. And Ryan, Absolute pleasure. Thank you, nice Thank you, you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks.